Alrighty guys, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about how you can trade the New York AM session. I'm going to be giving you pointers, how to find the draw on liquidity, and different strategies that I've used personally to execute during this session. So firstly what I like to do if I'm trading the New York AM session, I know that the market open and the volatility comes roughly at about 9.30, right? So we can see that volume and volatility at 9.30. Now, what I like to look at firstly if I'm trading the session is what has London session done, right? So. It's the same if I was trading London session, I'd look at the Asian session, but if I'm trading the New York AM session, I'm looking at the London session. Now, what do I mean by London session? I mean two things, right? Let me just draw a little arrow here. The first is going to be what has actually happened in terms of liquidity. So what liquidity has been taken, what liquidity has been generated, etc., etc. And the second point I'm gonna make is London session in terms of the price behavior. Right, so there's two things, price behavior and liquidity. Now, we know the market only targets one or two things, liquidity in the form of swing highs and swing lows, and imbalances in the form of fair value gaps, right? Now, yes, the market is currently live, but I'm going back in time just in replay mode. And we're gonna show you how you can execute this based on you know principles of using the London session liquidity and price behavior. So let's get into it. Going back in price action, I'll just get rid of this now. I'm gonna mark out the London session highs and London session lows, right? So a good way to do this, if we get back into replay mode, let's go into like the five minute chart. And what you can actually do here is you can go back into London session and just have a look at London session highs, London session lows, right? So firstly, these highs here, this one in particular, this is a London session high, but notice how there's one right next to that, which is relatively equal. So if I zoom into that, We've got relatively equal highs here, which we know are a massive draw on liquidity. So that there is a draw on liquidity for me. Now notice we take that out at 9.30. I'm now watching to see if price wants to push higher. So again, the market only does one or two things, either raise liquidity or moves to fill an imbalance. When it does both, it's a good time for the price to reverse. That's a little hint. So I'm gonna write that up here. When the market raises liquidity plus it fills a fair value gap, it equals a good time to reverse. It's a good rule of thumb to kind of go by because we know the market moves for those two things. So if we satisfy those two things, we should be able to have a reversal. So just have a look at what we've done here. We've actually rated two forms of buy side liquidity. We've rated the London session liquidity, which is right here. We've left a lot of sell side liquidity, right? And now we've pushed even higher to take out this level of liquidity. Now, if you have a look at this level of liquidity, when was that generated in? That was generated in Asian session. So we've actually taken out London buy side and Asian buy side. So think of this as the fact that we've taken out both London and Asian buy side liquidity. We've now generated enough energy, enough energy to move in the opposite direction. But here's the thing, even better, after taking that liquidity, we tap into this massive imbalance on the five minute time frame. So that massive bearish fair value gap. So we've now satisfied two things, right? We've satisfied the fair value gap and we've also satisfied the liquidity point. So again, come back to that fundamental rule guys that the market moves to take out two things or moves for two directions, either to take out liquidity or to fill an imbalance. When you do both, it's a good, good time for a reversal and that's what you see here. So. If we then zoom into this price action segment, we'll just change that a little bit. We can see how we can then look for an entry pattern. So use liquidity first, then pair that with time as well. Have the two lining up. You can't have one without the other. So time has to be in your side. And what I mean by time is a key session or a macro or silver bullet or something of that nature. So again, if we zoom into that kind of price action segment, let's have a look for an entry to potentially go short here. Now. There's one thing that I love, and if you see my videos or haven't watched them, I'll link them at the end of the video in the description. It's macros. Now, there's a macro from 950 to 1010. All that macros are are windows and time frame where price delivers importantly to either liquidity points or it gives you an entry to actually enter the trade. So this there between these two blue lines is a macro, right? So we wanna see price do something important in that macro. now. We know we've rated Asian buy side and London buy side. We've also had a market structure shift right here. And this particular day, if you don't know already, is a perfect example of what's called the unicorn setup. 
we'll talk about that as we go along. So we've got a market structure shift. There's a bearish fair value gap right here, which we're gonna mark out in red. So we'll get rid of this. And what I call that is a SIBI or a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. So that there is called a SIBI. Now notice as price is stepping its way down, we're respecting the up close candles. This becomes now a failure swing and so does this, right? But what these two down close candles represent are a breaker block. So if you haven't seen a breaker block, I haven't seen my videos on that, check those out. And I'll link those in the description below and at the end of the video. But essentially what you've got here, if I draw this out in time, you've got, you've got a high, let me just mark this out. You've got a high, you've got a low, you've got a higher high and a lower low that creates a market structure shift. Between this high and this high, the last down close candles are the breaker block. So in this case, if I was to highlight the breaker block, it would look like this. The whole candle and I'd extend that across in time. Whenever price trades back into that, that then is an opportunity to go short. So I'm gonna label that breaker block negative, right? So that's an opportunity to go short. The fact that we have a bearish fair value gap lined up with the breaker block makes it what's called a unicorn setup. So this here is a unicorn entry model, which is one of the highest probability entry models that there is to exist. And it's because that this is a very strong PD right now. When you pair this entry model with what we talked about previously, which is the fact that we've taken our Asian buy side, we've tapped into a 15 minute or five minute balance, and we're in a macro, this then increases the probability to trade further, right? So this is a macro, if you don't know, from 9.50 in the morning, you can see, to 10.10 in the morning, right? And again, you can enter during that macro right here if you wanted to, or you could enter right on that macro candle when it starts at 9.50. So even though that's right before silver bullet, it's in the silver bullet starting range. And then what happens is this, guys, we deliver price lower, and where does the market take us? Let's talk about it. The market takes us lower to take out levels of sell side liquidity. This is generated, this is also generated. These are all sell side liquidity points, right? And then what ends up happening is we have a shorter day because of the, um, the holiday in the US. But as expected, as you know that I love, this forms some trend on liquidity and then we sell off during the start of the next session. So yesterday's AM session was quite interesting, but a great, great example to tape read, a great, great example to you know chuck down in the books. I'm gonna mark this down as well, just so you can note it down. This here is what you call a failure swing, right? That there is what you call a failure swing. So I'm gonna mark that out. We'll make this a little bit smaller and we'll get rid of the border. So it's called a failure swing because we failed to take out this swing high. So quite a nice setup here to go short. And even if you didn't like this entry or that entry, well, there's many other opportunities, guys, to enter trades. Like you've got this setup right here, which is this setup right here, which is just a typical bearish fair value gap setup, as you can see, right? And then obviously we start to sell off from there. So how could you use this? How could you use these PDRs? How do you practice this? With time in the markets. Time in the markets is the only thing that lets you see these things and then lets you have, you know, starting from a 15 minute or a five minute, lets you zone in on what you're looking for. Again, if we're gonna summarize what we talked about today, guys, the most important thing out of any kind of concept is this, right? Liquidity and fair value gaps. Those are the two reasons why the market moves. On top of that, what you wanna look for then is key points in time. So you want key points in time to be the times that you actually execute your trades in because we know the probability is gonna be increased. And the easy part really is determining the entry model. Because as I've shown you here guys, you could enter using a breaker block and a SIBI or a bearish fair value gap even if you didn't see this breaker, you could have entered from this bearish fair value gap. If you didn't like that, you could have entered from this. If you didn't like any of those entries, well, guess what, guys? You could have entered from these two up close candles, which are an order block, and price retraces here. So there's many, many opportunities to you know to take advantage of price action. And you know, going into the intricate details here, we can start to kind of chat about what's happened and what we can see, right? Price returns run once fails to return again, right? So it indicates weakness, indicates price wanting to go down. And then the next time we return to a bearish fair value gap, do we respect the halfway point? If we just map this out just roughly, 
look at the bodies, how they respect that. We try once, the wicks do the damage, the bodies tell the story, and then we sell off. So your trade, depending on your entry, could have looked something, say, like this. Now, where do you place your stop? That's up to you. It can be above the swing high or above the bodies, right? Ideally, you want to have two to three PDRAs that are, that are you know, there to support you. So these three candles are an auto block. That's your breaker block. That's your, you know, bearish gap. So you could put your, you know, your stop loss there. What do you target? A one to two, whatever you need to, right? Whatever, we, whatever your risk reward wants to be based on your entry model. Same thing here. That's what you got to do. And that's up to you to decide. So these things are really important to consider. I thought I'd make a video on this. You guys voted and this was the top choice. So the New York AM session. I'm going to make another video on the London session today, which just occurred. Couple of nice opportunities there, and we'll talk more about macros and how price delivery actually acts and exists. But again, lovely, lovely price delivery, lovely, lovely price action. You know what I mean? And you can see how we're starting to, you know, step down here. This is the perfect model, a really good one to tape read, a really good one to look over. If you have any questions, guys, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Right, but until next time, I'll talk to you guys then.